So now we're ready to talk about a few helpful theorems uh, that will, will potentially save you a lot of time. Uh, as you saw in the last example, uh, we, you know, we put together this list of possible rational zeros, and then we just kind of blindly choose numbers and, and hope that they work. Well, there are a couple of theorems that, that if you, you choose a number and it doesn't work, uh, you're actually able to gain some, some knowledge out of it and, and guide your next selection a little bit. Uh, so the first one we'll look at would be the bounds theorem. So the bounds theorem says um, that if we take a number, let's say C, um, and this C here, this is a positive number, if we run through our synthetic division, and if what we end up with are all positive numbers, now, now remember, C is not a zero of the polynomial. C is a, a big swing and a miss. Uh, if C is not a zero, but it's positive, and it leaves us with all positive numbers on the bottom, then we can say that C is an upper bound, meaning we don't have to test any numbers in our list created by the rational zero theorem that are larger than C. Okay, So let's suppose now we take C to be negative, so now C is negative, and we end up with alternating signs on the bottom. It can start positive and go negative, positive, or it can start negative. As long as it alternates signs, then we can say that C is a lower bound, meaning that you wouldn't want to test any other numbers in your list lower than C uh, because they wouldn't work either. Now, the intermediate value theorem, this one might be the most useful. So the first thing we have to remember um, is that we're trying numbers and they're not going to work, okay? So if we try a number um, and it spits out something non-zero, essentially we've created a point. Now, I'll draw you a picture here real quick uh, and explain a few things along the way. So let me go ahead and plug in a number. If I plug in a number, let's say A, and it maps me somewhere right here, then I'm looking at F of A. And then let's suppose I plug in another number uh, by synthetic division, and it clearly isn't a zero, um, and it spits out a, a number maybe up here. So now I have F of B. Well, one of the things that I haven't quite mentioned yet, but you might be able to pick up on, um, is that the domain of a polynomial is negative to positive infinity. Um, we say polynomials are continuous, meaning that we can graph a polynomial entirely without ever lifting our pencil off the paper. Uh, and we'll study this more in a later section. Uh, but for now, you can see that if I'm going to connect these two points here, the, the neither of which are zeros, uh, the only way that I'm really going to be able to connect these two things is by somewhere between A and B crossing the x-axis. Uh, so that would lead me to believe that even though A is not a zero and B is not a zero, because I have Y values on either side of the x-axis, that somewhere between A and B, I've got to have a zero. So we'll take a look at an example uh, and talk about all um, the, both of these theorems, the bounds and the intermediate value theorem, to show them in action. So in the example I have up on the screen, uh, the instructions would generally read, find all real and imaginary numbers, or excuse me, find all real and imaginary zeros. Um, the first step would be the same. We would take it and we'd set it equal to zero. Uh, the second step would be the same in, in that we're trying to solve for x. Uh, we would first try the easiest, easiest methods of factoring first. Um, doesn't appear that this factors directly, so we would need to consider synthetic division. Um, in which case, we would need our list of possible rational zeros. Now, our p-value is 12. Our leading coefficient, our q, is 1. So the list of possible rational zeros would just be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12, plus or minus on those. And uh, I'm going to push this in a certain direction here. Um, the first number that I want us to try would be x equals 4. So if we take our synthetic division and we go ahead and we run it through x equals 4. Uh, we'll bring down the 1, uh, multiply, we get a 4, add, we get a 0, multiply, we get a 0, a 7, a 28, a 12, a 48, and a 60. So when we run 
x equals 4, it's pretty clear that it's not a 0. Um, but you can also see that we do end up with all positive numbers on the bottom. Now you might be wondering about the 0 here. Uh, 0 you can assign either a positive or negative to in this case um, so that it fits the pattern you'd like it to fit. So we've just determined that x equals 4 is an upper bound. Meaning that if we look at our list here, x equals 6 won't work and x equals 12 won't work. So we don't want to waste our time trying them. Now, the next one that I'm going to force this into would be a negative one. Uh, so if I set up my synthetic division here on negative one, bring the one down, uh, multiply, so we'll get a negative one there, add, multiply, add, It looks like we end up with a remainder of 40. Again, showing that negative 1 is not a 0. Uh, but because of the way the signs alternate, we can now conclude that x equals negative 1 is a lower bound. And again, which is incredibly significant because if you look back at this list of possible rational zeros, now we can conclude there are no negative rational zeros to the given polynomial. So we don't need to test negative 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. They're not going to work. Uh, so that lower bound um, was a good catch uh, by us, and, and it saved us hopefully a lot of time uh, in finding the actual zeros of the polynomial. All right, so the last number that we're going to test uh, is going to be number the number 2. Again, you can see that it is in the list of possible rational zeros. I'll go ahead and get my coefficients up there. Uh, bring down the 1, uh, multiply, add, and we'll just keep going with this. All right, so uh, in running the synthetic division, 2 is not a 0 of the polynomial. Um, it doesn't have all positives on the bottom, doesn't have alternating signs on the bottom. So you might think that 2 was kind of a waste. Um, but if you'll notice, I left up x equals 4. Um, and, and you should remember from uh, earlier uh, in the section that even when you run synthetic division, you're essentially just finding points. Uh, so this first point here that you found would have been 460. And the second point here we have is 2, negative 8. So let's think about what it is that we found. We found that 2 maps to negative 8, and we found that 4 maps to positive 60. So remember what I said a little while ago about how polynomials are continuous, meaning you can graph them entirely without ever lifting your pencil off the paper? I need to be able to connect the dots between this point and this point, and in doing so, it's impossible to do that without crossing the x-axis somewhere between 2 and 4. So, by the intermediate value theorem, my next guess would be to try x equals 3. So I would take 3, run my synthetic division, and hope for the best.